a remote viewing technology first described by George Adamski. Experimental flying disc with flying sphere above the vents, clearly seen in some photos surrounding the central section of the craft, was openings possibly used for collecting and ionizing atmospheric gases. These vents were not used in or left open outside a planet's atmosphere, where the magnetic lines of force are further apart, but, like the door underneath the craft, were hermetically sealed, either manually or automatically, after leaving the atmosphere. The hermetic sealing is accomplished by removing all foreign substances from the basic elements of the parent metals, and a device is used to charge both pieces that are to be sealed together, either positively or negatively, depending on how a certain metal is naturally charged. The hermetic sealing of two or more metals, cannot be accomplished unless they are first neutralized and then all charged with the same polarity. The carbon elements However, being amphoteric, chemically reacting as acidic to strong bases and as basic towards strong acids, and combining equally well with positively or negatively charged elements, cannot be charged. Tubes are used to achieve hermetic sealing, using this carbon principle. Villa reported that some crew members carried a miniature version of these tubes that appeared like it was made of an aluminum-like material, about 8 inches long and 1 inch in diameter, tapering slightly from the center outwards. These devices could be used to paralyze any animal life form, including man. Like the legendary Swiss contactee, Billy Meyer, Paul Villa was an unassuming gentleman of modest means who happened to capture some striking UFO photos. Villa had no axe to grind and no desire for publicity or fame. As so often happens in the world of UFO encounters, Villa did not find the flying saucer phenomenon. It found him. Villa told UFO investigators that he would receive a telepathic message telling him to be at a certain location, usually somewhere near his home in Albuquerque, New Mexico. When he arrived at the designated place, the alien ships would essentially pose for him while he took photos with a Japanese-made camera and standard Kodak color film. The results of those efforts are a beautiful series of full-color photos depicting the flying saucers in all their glory. Inner Light, Global Communications has recently released a new book called The Secret Life of Paul Villa that includes 20 pages of the very convincing photos as well as a fascinating background text by veteran UFO researcher Wintel Stevens. Stevens makes a very strong case for the authenticity of the photos, noting the following features. The photos of the second contact are quite sharp, compared to most saucer photos seen up to that time which was the 1960s through the early 1970s. Also, the image size of the saucer is large enough to show good detail without the extreme graininess that comes from enlarging the images. There is a series of photos, instead of just one photo, which provides more details for evaluation. Villa's truck is in the foreground of some of the photos providing a known object with which to compare the size of the saucer and to judge its distance away. The degree of sharpness of other objects in the near foreground and clouds and trees in the distance indicates that, that the object had to be very large in order to achieve the depth of field observed to exist in the photos, thereby ruling out the possibility that a small model may have been used to fake the photos. Villa's photos first came to light when some of them were published by Gabriel Green in his UFO International Journal in October, 1965. The complete spread from that long ago publication is reproduced here in its entirety and is a charming bit of UFO history. At the time, Villa's photos were greeted with some suspicion, even within the UFO community. Coral Runzon, who co-founded with her husband Jim, the now defunct aerial phenomena research organization, visited Villa at his home and asked him point blank how he had faked the photos. Villa responded sarcastically, Well, my dear lady, you just make yourself a model and toss it into the air and photograph it. 
Stevens adds that such a deception is not easily carried out. In fact, he tried doing it himself and by the third photo, his model was ruined. It was also impossible to get the model in the correct attitude and angle simply by tossing it up in front of the camera. The working process and history of some of Villa's more dramatic photos is described in detail by Wintmuss Stevens. And his text is at all times both intelligent and cautious. But the real appeal of the secret life of Paul Villa is the photos themselves. The 20 pages of full-color reproductions are breathtaking to look at and do appear to show actual flying saucers set against lovely desert scenery. Numerous black and white photos are also included throughout the book. There are different types of ships from photo to photo, which is a fact consistent with UFO witness accounts since the 1940s that has led some analysts to think we are being visited by several different alien races and civilizations. That theory also accounts for the many types of occupants reported, from the Greys to the Reptilians to the Nordics. The notoriety that came with being chosen to take the photos did not make life easy for Villa, however. He suffered many instances of harassment, including an incident that happened when he stopped off at a local tavern on his way home from work and ordered a beer at the bar. As he was sipping it, a complete stranger walked up to him and said, So you're the nut that is said to be talking to some spaceman? And punched Villa in the nose, drawing blood. Villa never forgot that moment of true violence. He was often forced to move his wife and household to new locations after such incidents, which included neighbors attacking his mobile home and even some very frightening visits from the dreaded men in black. But perhaps, as Villa began to have face-to-face -face encounters with the ship's occupants, it was all worth it in the long run. For Villa, the aliens were entirely human-looking, though more uniformly attractive than Earth people and definitely more refined in face and form. They took Villa on a tour of one of their saucers and confided in him that the whole galaxy to which Earth belongs is a grain of sand on a huge beach compared to the unfathomable number of inhabited bodies in the entire universe. They said their craft are constantly active over our planet and that they are here on a friendly mission to help Earth people. Which is of course the same kind of contacting meets space brother experience that was earlier claimed by others like Howard Menger and George Adamski, who also produced realistic looking photos of UFOs. There is one truism that is hard to get around when talking about such photos, any photo, even if it was later proven to be inarguably authentic would quite naturally looked posed or faked. We have no absolute standard to judge such things by, no backlog of history to compare a real photo to. How could an actual photo look any different to the human eye than one that is cleverly faked? And so we remain in a kind of limbo between truth and falsehood with regard to Villa's UFO photos or any others that have come down to us through the years. It is the classic situation where the individual must make up his own mind in lieu of any kind of authoritative, concrete verification. In any case, the secret life of Paul Villa, UFO contact from Coma Berenices is more thrill of seeing his many photos and pondering the mysteries the photos imply. Truth, meanwhile, is for somewhere further down the line. Paul Villa's second series of color photographs was exposed at several locations in April 1965. The most interesting photographs from this series were those taken on Easter Sunday, April 18, at about 4 p.m., in an area 20 miles south of Albuquerque. Close to the bed of the Rio Grande River, one of several areas I visited together with Villa in 1976. At one point the craft, 
which he told me he estimated at about 150 feet in diameter, projected a beam of light that caused a small bush to light on fire, a biblical burning bush. Then another beam shot out and extinguished it. Smoke from the fire is visible in the trees just below the craft, and just above and to the left of the tailgate of Villa's truck, 